Well, here we have an EC135, and very luckily, I've been allowed to have a look at the cockpit. Full authority digital engine control. Fantastic piece of machinery, and now I'm allowed to get inside it. Brilliant. Now we're inside the helicopter. We can see the paddles for the rudder. We can see the the select uh, the, cy the cyclic the the cyclic yeah. the cyclic control and collective and the collective. So this is oh. okay. Go go ahead. Yeah. This is the main, it's called, this is your, your CAD, which is a caution advisory display, okay? Uh, which, everything yellow is a caution, if there's something wrong with the aircraft. Obviously, these are all telling me there's things wrong. This is everything to do with anything on system number one. This side is anything to do with systems number two, i.e. engine number one, which is the left-hand engine, or engine number two, which is the right-hand engine. Anything in the middle is a common system. Now, it's telling us we have a lot of problems because the engines aren't running at the moment, therefore that's why we have problems. Normally these would be clear, okay? This is the fuel contents then. So we've got uh, two tanks. One supplies the left engine, one supplies the right engine. And one main tank then that supplies both of these tanks. So you can see they were carrying at the moment 380 plus 90, which is 470 kilos of fuel. And that'll do us for about two hours and 20 minutes, okay? So that's CAD, this then is called a VEMD, which is Vehicle and Engine Monitoring Display. Uh, this is our power lever essentially, so when the engine is running, we pull power here, and that just indicates how much power we're using. This is engine oil pressures and temperatures, transmission oil pressures and temperatures, and the other engine's oil pressures and temperatures. AHARs, which are attitude and heading reference systems. Uh, two engines, obviously, everything is duplicated. So. For, for redundancy. And then this is just our navigation page, pages here. PFD, primary flight display, and ND, which is navigation display. And that's it. And we can we interface with that through here and through the autopilot panel. And that's uh, pretty much pretty much what the systems as I say well, 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 we, how we interface with the aircraft. Thank you, John. That's fantastic, John. You're brilliant. You're really kind and considerate. It's not like a car. You, you could never risk running out of fuel. <laughs> we, have, we have what we call an MLA, which is our minimum landing allowance. So we must always land with about 20 minutes fuel. Have you ever done an auto rotation in training or anything like that? Oh, we, oh yeah, we, we absolutely, absolutely. We do them. We did one one today. Um, regularly really? practice them. Oh yeah, yeah. Where yeah, would you yeah, do that? Yeah. We did it in, in why would we do it? No, or, where, where? Oh, Waterford Airport. No, we wouldn't do full, we would never do an auto rotation to touchdown. We do auto rotation, but we give back the engines then before. To, I understand. Uh, so, so with the twin engine aircraft, there's no requirement to do auto rotations to run down, uh, to touchdown because the likelihood of a double engine failure is so small. Um, and we're happy that we do that, like that, full, full auto rotations in the simulators. But we do what we call engine on auto rotations. So we bring the engines to idle, which causes the aircraft to go into auto rotation. And then before we land, we just bring the engines back in and just do a normal powered landing. We got to the skids there, because we were doing run-on landings. Oh really, yeah. Simulated engine failures. So it was a training flight we were on. So.